How many of you know you can work hard mentally? Sometimes, because I'm a writer, and, 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 and there's a lot of stuff that I have to do in the church. You know, I retyping and rewriting uh, prayers and doing all these kinds of things. And at the end of the day, I just feel the power. I, I drained out of me. I'm just tired, you know? And I didn't work hard with my hands that day, not in that sense, but I'm talking about brain power. Right. And at the end of the day, it's just like, oh, Lord, I need to recharge it. And so what I'm telling you is that's exactly the point. You have to be continually filled because like that cell phone, there's a lot of ways to work. There's a lot of ways to use that power. And that power will come, go out of you and you better recharge yourself. So point number one is in order to dominate the flesh, you must be filled with the spirit. And then point number two is in order to dominate the flesh, you must fast and pray. This is exciting. This is really exciting. You know, at... Uh, at, I guess I'll call it our sister church because it's kind of fast to become our sister church. At uh, Love and Unity, uh, Apostle Hill has a saying that he talked to his whole church. And I told him I liked it so much that I'm, I'm going yeah, I'm taking it with me too because this church needs to do it. He says, he says, he tells all his members, read your Bible, fast and pray. And then they say, fast and pray, read your Bible. I mean, that's like the three top things that if every person in the church will know you can't go wrong. So the way they do it, he, say, he says, read your Bible, and then they say, fast and pray, and then they say, fast and pray. He says, fast and pray, and then they say, read your Bible. My point is, these three things are key. Read your Bible, fast and pray, fast and pray, read your Bible. Now, point number two says, in order to dominate the flesh, you must fast and pray. Now, here's an interesting, interesting thing. Letter A says, Jesus fasted, and letter B says, Jesus taught on fasting. Now, watch this. When in the scripture can we, where in the scripture, I'll say it like this, where in the scripture can we put our finger on Jesus fasting? Where in the scripture can we say, ah, because remember, he's our great example, right? We look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We know that Jesus, if I ask you all, let it be, Jesus taught on fasting. Where did he teach on fasting? Almost everybody in, in the church should say Matthew chapter 6. You know, the sermon on the Mount. Jesus taught us about fasting. But that was Jesus teaching us about fasting. That wasn't Jesus actually fasting. But where did Jesus, where, do, where, is, where is the instance or the episode or the, the example where Jesus was actually fasting? Huh? When he was in the wilderness, very good. He fasted in the wilderness. Any other examples? So he fasted in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights, right? See, y'all thought 21 was tough. Huh? Y'all don't want that fast. That's a, we don't want to go on the wilderness fast. So that was bread. That was no bread for 40 days and 40 nights. Somebody say, thank you, Pastor, for your mercy and grace. But, but listen, here's another example that you may not have thought about when Jesus was fasting. John. Chapter 4, with the woman at the well. It's a very interesting story. Jesus is there. There's a woman. There's a Samaritan woman. She's at the well. And guess what, church? See, what I'm trying to tell you is that you may look at the, you may look at the, the wilderness experience and say, Jesus fasted for 40 days, and I know he's our example, but I, I don't know if I can do that. 40 days, but I'll, I'll be up in... I'll be up in uh, uh, Kaiser, you know, let me try to put some fluids in me if I go for 40 days without, without anything. But I'm trying to tell you that Jesus fasted as a way of life. And we have to start looking at that and fasting as a way of life. You know, in other words, not necessarily uh, a set day, although I have some set, a set day, a couple of days a week. But my point is that he was continually fasting. Now, Jesus fasted in Samaria or while he was going through Samaria. You know, he said, I must needs go through Samaria. And there was this woman who came at the well, right? Now, how do I know he was fasting? Because they had been traveling a long time. And the disciples had left him to go into town for some food, right? And when they came back with the chicken, Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't supposed to mention chicken right now. I'm sorry, y'all. 
Will y'all please check it? Yeah. White, Preston, some of y'all, some of y'all need to go back and read that fast. <laughs> y'all be talking about, I'm, I'm going to Popeye's. No, you can't have that kind of chicken right now. You can have some white, breast, of ch boneless, somebody say skinless. skinless. Friedless. Fried. No fried chicken. Fried. No fried chicken right now. Just to, you know, lean, baked or bro actually grilled or broiled. Now watch this. So they were bringing the food back from the, from the grocery store in town. And when they offered Jesus food, they knew he hadn't eaten. They hadn't eaten because they didn't have any food. So when they offered him some food, what happened? He did not take it. He refused it. He said, I have food that you know not of. And what? And they said, they said did, did somebody bring Jesus some food? Did, what, what's going on? Did, he, did that woman give him some food? He said, my food is to do the will of the Father that sent me. He was saying, I'm fasting right now. And I'm doing ministry right now. And this is an incredible moment. I'm getting ready to bring the Gentiles into the kingdom of God. And I need to be on my game. And I don't want no chicken. I don't want to be burping no burgers right now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you get you one of them good old chili burgers. And you do. I don't want to be burping in nobody's face right now. He said, I'm, I'm trying, I'm, 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 I'm on a, I'm, I'm eating. I'm on a, I have some spiritual food right now. That I'm, that I'm, yeah, and I'm empowered. So look, point number two is, in order to dominate the flesh, you must fast and pray. And letter A says, Jesus fasted. And he did this as a way of life. Letter B says, he taught on fasting. And notice, he said that you should fast without showing sadness outwardly. And he said you should fast in secret so that God can reward you openly. Wow. Isn't that interesting? Now, I know that we all know that we're fasting. And I also know that there are times when we do have to tell people because somebody will put something before you. You know, and you'll say, you know what, I'm, I'm sorry for that. Or there may be times when you have to tell somebody something because... It's necessary because, like, let's say you're in the car and you feel it lightheaded or something. And you say, look, I'm fasted. We got to stop and get something. You know, or whatever the situation may be. You need to communicate that. But as a general rule, the general rule is you, you fast in secret so that God can reward you what? Openly. Openly. Now, interestingly enough, that's, that's why Jesus didn't tell them that he was fasting right there. He just said... I have food that you know not about. Isn't that interesting? He didn't just come out and say, look, y'all, I'm fasting right now. Though. He just said, I have food that you know not of. And they were perplexed. And they didn't know, who, who stuck at your chicken? What's up? Matthew 6, 6, 16. He says, now this is Jesus teaching on fast. He says, and when you fast, do not put on a sad face as the hypocrites do. I'm so glad that we got a church here with nobody walking around. No, like, oh, yeah, we, 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 we fast. We ain't doing that, are we, y'all? Amen, we ain't not doing that, are we, y'all? It says, and then watch what Jesus said. He said, these hypocrites neglect their appearance so that everyone will see that they're fast. I'm glad we don't have people walking around. Just listen, it said fasting. It didn't say fasting from combing your hair. It didn't say fasting. It, abstaining, fasting, one definition for fasting is abstaining from food. It didn't say abstaining from taking a shower. It didn't say abstaining from brushing your teeth. It didn't say abstaining from... from you know, I'm just saying, this is what Jesus is saying. He's saying, just because you're fasting doesn't mean you have to all of a sudden stop everything and start looking like you're pitiful. And, you, and so everybody looks at you like, man, what's wrong with you? Why you, why your hair all torn up? And ooh, your breath. Ooh, man, what's... What's going on? Oh, man, I'm fasting for the Lord, you know. <laughs> you understand? Don't, put, don't, don't use the Lord as, as, as your excuse for your laziness that you just didn't want to brush your teeth. I, and I assure you, he says, they neglect their appearance so that everyone will see that they are fasting. I assure you, they have already been paid in full. Literally speaking, they have their reward. If, 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 if you are trying to get your reward from man then you got it but if you're trying to get your reward from God then keep it between you and the Lord and you'll get it. Verse 17 when you go without food 
Listen to, what he, listen to what Jesus said. He said, when you go without food, wash your face and comb your hair. I, this is the Bible, y'all. I'm, I'm just reading this the, the good news translation, but this is what he's saying. He said, when you go without, when you fast, just because you fasting doesn't mean you just slumming. Still put on your Sunday best. Still praise the Lord. Still hate brother and sister. Now, don't misunderstand me. Fasting can be physically innervating, can be physically tiring. So I'm not trying to tell you to front if you're tired. If you're tired, then go lay down, get some rest. And if you're tired, you're a little somber that day, that's all right. But 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 he's just talking about don't go to the extreme. Just because you fast and don't be slumming. Verse 18. So that others can so that others cannot know that you're fasting. Only your father who is unseen will know. And your father who sees what you do in private will reward you openly. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So point number one was what? In order to dominate the flesh, you must be filled with what? The spirit. And, and the key point there was be filled with the spirit and not with contrary spirits. Be careful. Because contrary spirits can overcome uh, the Holy Spirit if you allow it to. And it's not, we read the scripture about not being drunk with wine, but, but there are, you know, there are other things, too. Just like, like I said, like, like hatred, you know, strife. Do you notice that in Galatians 5, it tells you what the fruit of the Spirit is? Uh, in fact, really quickly, in Galatians 5, it tells you what the fruit of the Spirit is. 